From the dated and rusty light fixtures, to the cluttered and unstyled surfaces, to the dingy and dark blue paint, join me in tackling this room as I brighten and lighten, clean up and clear out, and bring in a botanical vibe with a contemporary black and white mural that anyone can do. I started off with my helpers, rolling on two coats of a white satin paint, and then spent time scrubbing and cleaning. Usually our biggest obstacle to getting a room looking great is the decluttering and the cleaning. I hate adding decorations to an already cluttered space, so I'm getting rid of magazines, extra brushes, and bathtub toys. Even though you can't see inside them, cleaning out your drawers really does help. It allows you to put the things you use daily out of sight. Growing up, we always stored our toothbrushes on the countertop and anything else we used often. Hairspray, water bottles, toothpaste. But I've finally gotten a habit of storing those things away as much as possible. It just gets hard when the drawers get full. So decluttering them often is the way to go. I finally got rid of the rusty shower curtain bar and went with a simple white curtain. This is the biggest thing that's bothered me in my bathroom since we've been here for five years. I've been staring at this horrible caulk job on the back side of the tub, wishing that I would scrape it off and recalk it. I don't know why it's taken me this long to finally get to it. And I'm moving on to hang these beautiful feather hooks that I found at Hobby Lobby for $7 each. The kids have never been great about using towel bars, so I've always done hooks in the past and it seems to work the best. I'm just eyeballing the spacing and I didn't use drywall anchors because the weight is pulling down and it's just towels and clothes. If you were hanging shelving, you would definitely want to find a stud or use drywall anchors. My favorite place to find great affordable rugs is Ross, where I got this beautiful jute and mixed colors rag rug. It's not scratchy like a natural fiber rug would be, but it has that great earthy look with just the pops of bright color that I need to give a fun, lighthearted look to the room, and it was just under $12. Moving on, I decided it was time to tackle the dated light fixtures. They had some rust on them from the moisture of being in a bathroom for so long, so I thought about sanding and spray painting them. I decided since I didn't really like the glass bulb covers, I would need to look for replacements for those too. It turned out buying all new covers for eight bulbs was going to add up. Since I would need to take them down anyways to paint them, I jumped online to see what the options were. I got super lucky and found these beautiful brass and dark brown metal fixtures for just $25 each. I actually think they look perfect for the boho bathroom makeover. I'll try to put a link in the description below so you can easily find them if that's something you're interested in. While I was online, I decided that using towels would be a great way to bring some pattern into the bathroom. I was looking for some botanical patterns and I knew I wanted to bring in some black and white. Most of the best patterns I was finding were on these strange microfiber towels. They're supposed to be great for the beach and great for traveling. They fold up really small and you're supposedly able to shake off all the sand after laying on the beach. Either way, I really loved the patterns and the colors and the price was right, they were around $12 each. And here's a little thing I made from the pompous grass in the backyard. It's kind of weird, I don't know what it is, it's not useful, so I'm gonna hang it on the wall. with electricity is just the thing that makes me happy. That's the biggest lie I've ever heard. Makes me laugh. Usually, Makes usually it's cussing. But that's okay. I think that you're developing a positive attitude. Oh, man. As long as I got a fan, I am happy. At home, working for yourself. No, that's just... Working for me. I'm just happy that I got a fan. It's not hot. I'm going to post a link in the description to these soft shorts. They look like jeans, but they're soft. Oh, God. Oh, wow. This one's 
totally different from the other one. Really? My husband and I have renovated over a dozen houses for flips and investment properties. However, I have never taken on changing out the light fixtures or doing much that involves electricity. If you're doing it yourself, my first suggestion is to watch some detailed videos to learn, and secondly, find the breaker and shut it off before you expose any wires. I love how these lights turned out. Moving on, I'm going to start sketching for the mural I want to do on the wall above the bathtub. I love the look of these sago palms. We saw a lot of them in Florida when we finally made it to the beach this year. Under the sago palms, I'm just sketching a few cannas from the backyard that I took some pictures of earlier in the day. I love how tropical cannas look, and they're so easy to grow, even in some non-tropical areas. We're in zone seven here in Oklahoma, and I've had no trouble with cannas. They overwinter just fine, and they pop up in the spring and look so beautiful. Before I show you how the mural went, I'm going to do a quick DIY macrame, even using some twine from the dollar store. This is a first for me. I've never done the macrame before, but I really wanted to hang up some plants and even some cuttings of plants that I got from my mom. Here I am just cutting four lengths of twine to my arm's length, plus two more and cutting them about two feet long. String the twine through a ring loop or whatever you can find like a keychain or even a shower curtain ring. Make all the string even at the bottom except the two extra long threads. Let one end of each of those hang extra long and pull those two threads to the outside edges of all the strings. Using the long strings you're going to make a square knot. These knots remind me of making friendship bracelets back in the day. As you make the knots, it naturally will make a spiral and continue around. Here's a little closer look at that square knot, and I'll link in the description below to the tutorial that I watched to make this.
Once all your threads are even at the bottom, then you start making the part that holds the plant. This is done by separating the now 12 strings into groups of four and tying the same square knot using the two outside strings of each group. Tie three to six knots. Once you've done each group, pull two strings from one group and two from another and repeat the knots again. Do this as many times as you need based on the size of your jar or your pot that you're trying to hang. I accidentally made my macrame a little too small for the mason jar I was trying to use. So I found this little bottle and I thought I could put a cutting in it anyways. I didn't mind the label so I just left it on. Now I'm gathering all the strings at the bottom and I'm going to make a loop knot. Just cut a piece of string, loop one end, and wrap the whole string around all your strings together. Then thread the leftover string into your loop at the bottom and the piece of string hanging at the top out of the loops, you just give it a tug and pull the string through. This plant is called Hoya carnosa or a porcelain flower or more commonly referred to as a wax plant. These cuttings came from my mom's house where she diligently takes care of the most beautiful potted house plants you've ever seen. This particular plant originally came from my grandma McCoy's house in Minnesota. Every year when we went on vacation, we'd take a little cutting back and try to get some plants started. I've only seen it bloom once or twice in my life. And there's something just nostalgic about keeping this plant going. I'm making another macrame plant holder here. This time I doubled up my string to make it a little thicker and a little bigger. It's kind of relaxing and therapeutic when you take the time to sit down and do something so repetitive, a little bit mindless, but also so satisfying when you see the end result. I absolutely love the way the gathered twine mimics the roots of my cuttings. Try to use good water for your plants. These plants are already rooting out like crazy. It's been about a week since I filmed this and my bottles are full of roots. They just look so beautiful. I've been careful to just use the filtered water and then if someone drinks a bottle of water and leaves half of it and we don't know whose it is, I just grab it and dump it on the plant or fill up the little jars and they're doing so great. It also helps that I have this great window with tons of natural light. If you don't have a window and you're trying to do this look, you might just go with fake plants or even think about getting a grow light to put in your space. Since we're talking about using great water for our plants, just want to remind you that fluoride is actually a waste product from the fertilizer industry. It contains trace elements of arsenic and lead. Putting it in the water supply was a great idea for an industry that was having to pay to get rid of it at the time. It has been linked to lower IQ and is also linked to many other ailments, including kidney disease, cancer, fluorosis, thyroid issues, and more. There are also studies that show only about half of the fluoride that you ingest is excreted, so the other half is available inside your body and collecting in different places. I actually don't have a problem with a little fluoride on my toothpaste, as they say it's a pharmaceutical grade fluoride anyways. But ingesting a byproduct from the fertilizer industry on a daily basis just doesn't seem good. So treat your plants and your kids with love and give them the best water you can get. We bring our own five gallon jugs up to Walmart or Sprouts. They both have reverse osmosis water filters and it takes out all of the fluoride and lead and chlorine, everything that you don't want. It's worth it.
This wall has been begging for a mural for a long time. I knew I wanted to keep it simple, and I loved the black and white murals I was finding around the internet. So I took the botanical drawing that I had done earlier up to Kinko's and had them copy it onto a transparency for me. I projected it onto the wall, and I really liked how the cannas looked all by themselves. So the sago palm may appear in a different project altogether. One of my best finds this year are these beautiful Sharpie oil-based paint markers. I don't remember ever having good experiences with regular paint markers. It seems like they want to dry up easily or leak all over the place. For some reason, these Sharpie oil-based paint markers are just so smooth and they keep the paint going. I will say if your wall is textured, you're gonna have a lot more trouble. Mine is very smooth in this room. A textured wall, it might even be worth it to skim coat it with drywall mud and then sand it out to make a smooth surface. However, that's not necessary for every kind of mural, just the type of mural where you want really straight and smooth lines. I forgot to mention that I used an overhead projector and a transparency to project this image onto the wall. The overhead projectors are kind of relics. I found one on Craigslist last time and before that I was lucky enough to find one in a thrift store. I've never paid more than about $20 for one and I think there are also options to project digitally and you could bypass making a transparency altogether. I bought this little trash can recently, so I don't really want to scrap it. I'm going to try to use it and make it fit in. I also found this metal bucket in my dad's garage. For some reason, I really just love it. I don't know what it is. I think I'm going to have to paint it, but I want to leave some of the old weathered look to it as well. I'm using a burlap coffee bean sack and some liquid nails. I got this one at Atwood's. The glue has a really strong smell, so if you're sensitive to glues, leave it outside for a couple of days before you bring it in. I gave my old rusty bucket a spray paint of a neutral color and decided to leave some of the old weathered look coming through. For the inside, I wanted a bright pop of color, so I went with a nice green. I love the look of this bucket now. I'm going to use it as a hamper in the bathroom, but I felt like it needed just a little something more. So I went and got my oil-based Sharpie marker. I used a white one this time, and I wrote down a few of my favorite Bible verses. I think it's good to put those kind of things on the wall and in your decor if that's something you're trying to instill in your kids. Thinking back, I can clearly remember and envision the pictures that hung on our walls. From the family photos, the embroidered Bible verses, I remember a mirror with gold butterflies and a sign in my dad's garage that said the day sure seems long when you get to work on time. I really love cannas so much. They're so beautiful, so tropical, and just the fact that I can actually grow them is exciting to me. I'm thinking about trying to bring one in for the winter. Let me know in the comments if you've ever done this before. I really think it would work and it'd be an easy and cheap way to get a huge tropical plant into my living room. I could still enjoy the beauty of some green plants when everything outside is brown and gray. I'm seeing a lot of decor including these pompous grass plumes. I actually never thought to bring them inside. I originally planted this plant right under our treehouse, thinking that it might save someone's life if they ever fell out of the tree. Unfortunately, the grasses are so sharp that the kids have gotten cut on them more than anything. So here I'm just mixing a little drywall powder into a paste to patch some of the areas around the new light fixtures. We also found some really nice bulbs that look great. They were from Walmart. I don't remember how much they were, but I will link it in the description along with the light fixtures because it came out so nice.
up listening to talk radio, and I'm always keeping up with politics. It's more exciting than any fictional spy movie, and more important as well. Let me know in the comments what you're listening to while you work. All right, so here's the before. The old bathroom was dark, cluttered and dated, worn and unfinished. There was no specific style or theme, and it was hard to keep clean because of a buildup of clutter. I think sometimes we let ourselves feel guilty about spending money or spending time on something that seems insignificant like a bathroom or creating a beautiful space in our house but we have to remember that we're setting the tone for our family and sometimes waking up to something that's not beautiful or a cluttered space or a messy area can cause stress and even mental blocks unfinished projects can stop us in our progress on other areas So I really love how peaceful this bathroom turned out. I love the white walls that are not too busy. I love the black and white mural and the beautiful plants that just bring all of this together. Thanks for joining me on my Boho Botanical Bathroom Makeover. I have a budget patio makeover video in the files. And my next project is the Great Garden Cleanout, and I'll be harvesting my new cash crop, these giant Zuka gourds. They are so easy to grow, and I'll tell you all about it. So please subscribe if you want to find out more, and leave me a like if you got any inspiration or ideas from this video. And leave me a comment if you have any suggestions, or if you want to let me know what you're working on. I would love to see it. Thanks again. I'll catch you in the next video.